Hello there, dear manifesting generator. Or if you have purchased this course because someone in your life is a manifesting generator, we are gonna talk all about you today and your type and your strategy. You are actually a hybrid of two mm. unique types within human design and you're all rolled into one. So we're gonna outline that information for you today. Awesome, yes, a hybrid type for the new age, and that essentially means that you get to be a non-linear being. So you are essentially a possibility expander. You expand for the rest of us what we believe to be possible, and at the same time, you uplift us all and remind us that life gets to be fun. Mm-hmm. The sacral center is activated in your chart. So let's talk about, first and foremost, the importance of the sacral chakra. Because it's essentially what makes you a generator. Yes. So 70% of the population is a generator because you have your a, sacral center defined. A generator or a manifesting generator. Exactly. Yes. So 35% of each, roughly, plus or minus. And if you look at the image that we have here, you will see that if you have this box colored in red in your chart, then that means that you have a very consistent energy of the second chakra, the sacral center. Yeah, and this makes you very self-aware of your own desires and the things that light you up. It gives you this ability to play with life and really dance with your desires and respond to the things that really light you up. And this is how you literally generate energy to give back to the rest of the world. Yes. In traditional chakra awareness, information, literature, the second chakra is literally the life force energy. It's all about sexuality, procreation. The first root chakra, it's one plus one equals two, and so it's meeting of the other. It's the point from the first chakra meets another point, the duality, and it creates a line and then there's a wave that then stimulates the creative movement and force. It is traditionally associated with water. The first chakra is associated with earth and solidity and stability. The second chakra is movement and moving forward in space and time. Without the second chakra, there would be no time or space. It would just be a stagnant one unity perspective. With the second chakra, there is polarity and there's duality and there is I and other. And it's usually at this stage of development that uh, when this when the second chakra starts to develop is when infants start to realize that there's a separation between them and their parent or them and the rest of the world. Here in the sacral chakra, you have unity meets duality, where stillness becomes movement. It's the opposites of attract. You are the motivating force for growth and change through your continual movement. You might find that having a defined sacral chakra, you need to move. Mm. Like your body requires movement in order to be healthy uh, and you need to expend that energy daily so that you, because you will constantly be replenishing that energy every, when you wake up, like you sleep and then you wake up and that energy gets replenished. Also with the chakra, it's all about going with the flow, letting go of what was past and moving forward into the next thing. Right, because you're actually not supposed to be initiating things. So for you, you kind of get clear on what it is that you want and what lights you up and you wait for the universe to bring you signs and synchronicities and things to respond to and say yes to, so long as those are things that make you excited and kind of invigorate your energy and have an expansive force for you. Yes being receptive because it's I and other. Mm -hmm. So you will be focusing on yourself and your own creative process because you have that naturally regenerative inside of your design and your blueprint in your DNA makeup. And then it's requiring, this duality is requiring another to come to you being delivered and the matrix is being pulled to mm. you that gives you an opportunity to respond to the external world. Absolutely. 
And because of this duality and because you have this life force energy that magnifies and attracts other people into you, you likely learned at a young age that other people were reliant on you for your energy. And because of that, you were likely um, praised for maybe doing things that you didn't want to do or things that you didn't like to do in order to make others happy or to satisfy what other people were wanting. So that's usually a huge part of the deconditioning process as a generator is understanding that your energy doesn't have to be used in a self-sacrificing way, but rather when you follow the things that light you up, you actually, it creates a positive reinforcement cycle where you say yes and respond to things and it lights you up and then the universe brings you more and it brings you more and it draws more people in and it allows you to uplift other people to the maximum of your potential. So you're also here to be very self-aware about what your desires are. You, in a sense, it's really, really magical to be a generator because you essentially get to kind of dance with life and like blur the lines between work and play and inspire the rest of us to live our dream life. But also kind of the downside to that is that delayed gratification can be really, really hard for a generator. And that's because if you're doing something that doesn't bring you that instant gratification, then it kind of burns your energy. Okay, so what does it mean to respond to the universe? What does it mean to respond to what the universe brings to me or your external circumstances? For you, you are a, literally a magnet. That sacral center draws things to you because it is a full enveloping aura. Your aura draws people in and attracts those things that you are thinking to you if it's in alignment with your body and your energy. Yeah. So whether it be people and relationships, opportunities, certain situations, um, you know, different environments, maybe it's a house you're looking for, um, but basically the universe um, brings those things to you. And you'll notice that if you have a thought in your head and yet there are no signs or synchronicities or clues from the universe to give you some help to validate that those that those thoughts are supported by the universe you might feel a little bit frustrated mm. but that's just an opportunity for you to recognize that maybe there's something better for you that is coming or being delivered to you not to get stuck on what's not happening or not getting stuck on having instant gratification of what you think you want but having the following the path of the clues the signs and the synchronicities of what your soul wants and trusting that the universe is delivering to you exactly what you need, not necessarily what you think you want. Because this is really important. Living in your human design effectively and in alignment creates for you less frustration mm -hmm. because we're being trained we're training ourselves to think from our bodies mm. and using the clues within our bodies and within the depths of what's underneath and below the neck to use our brain to filter that information and process it to find out what's important for us or what is in alignment for us of what we are meant to choose. Frustration can also be the literal frustration or stuckness of energy within your body. And usually this is a sign that you're unable to use your energy because for whatever reason, energy is, is stuck within you and you're not feeling like you're getting things that you can respond to and say yes to. And usually this is a good time to look within and ask yourself, if there's maybe a lot of things that you have been saying yes to that should be no's because essentially when you're full of doing things that aren't in alignment with you then it dulls your ability it basically takes up too much space within your aura and it dulls your ability to recognize and create space for something else to come into your life even if that thing is in alignment for you absolutely and this is where it's really important you know to use your to use your authority as well whether it's like emotional or sacral authority, but either way, you're gonna have a really defined sacral response of something is either gonna bring you basically expansion within your body, or it's gonna feel like it's a withdraw, like there's a withdrawing sensation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, good questions to ask yourself when given an opportunity to respond to something. Is this lighting me up? Is it causing a sense of dread? Does it make me excited? Yeah. Does, does it light me up? Because if the answer is no or like, uh, like maybe, then it's a no. <laughs> right. Usually it's a no. When that first initial response, it's that gut intuition. It's like, you know those, that phrase is go with your gut? That is designed and for made you. for you. Not for everybody, but Not definitely for, yeah, for you. Definitely for you. Because our gut intestines, they're actually considering it a brain. There mm -hmm. is awareness centers, nerve centers. It's your, our body's first and or maybe second brain even. It could be our first because that probably developed first before we got the actual this for expanded consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it goes with survival and instinct combining with our spleen and our sacral center. We'll talk more about authorities in uh, our authority videos of what the specifics are for making decisions. But for right now, it's knowing what to respond to. And for you, it might be listening to your sounds of your mm-hmm, mm-mm, that could be a potential, or it could just be an internal feeling that you experience. Yeah, because when you go, mm-hmm, like that, you can like literally feel the energy rising within you when you go, mm, mm, mm. It's a withdrawing sensation. So it's basically trying to protect your body from saying yes to that because it, it's telling you to say no. And where generators get themselves into a lot of trouble is when they've been thinking about something that they desire or something that they want to manifest into their lives and something comes along and it like meets their criteria for what they're manifesting and they say yes to it even though it's supposed to be no. They're trying too hard with their mind when in reality if they were to really truly get true with themselves and see if it gives them an expansive response a lot of times it's a no because the universe is going to bring you something that's even better. Right. It's either yes or something's better, and it's okay for you to say no. This is an opportunity for you to be really clear with yourself. I would consider this type to be a active and receptive. Mm. You're like this, um, this blend because you do have this generative ability to keep things going and keeping some type of consistency with your work and your purpose in life. That is a huge question for you is discovering what your purpose is and what are you here to contribute to the world. So when it's waiting to respond, it doesn't necessarily always mean doing nothing. And this is just to clarify what the, it's not doing nothing. It's responding to immediate tasks in your environment. Like in order for you to create space for something new, sometimes you need to clean out your closets, organize your house, bring stuff to the thrift store, or just clearing out the old and bringing and allowing space for the new. It's always um, taking care of immediate tasks. And I found that I have a generator partner. If he's ever down or out or um, bummed out about something, I always tell him, well, let's focus on a task or like, what can you do to that's a pressing that would help you get to where you're going, whether it's it's something small just to get you to move that energy because it's all about movement. If you're feeling stuck or stagnant, what little things can you take care of to focus on yourself but then also moves the energy? To get you in the right direction to where you're trying to go. Yes. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's all about moving the energy because the center is all about movement. Yeah. And it could be, I don't know, like mowing the, mowing the yard. It's... It could be anything, any type of like productivity. And productivity in general just makes you feel better. Yeah. If you're feeling like lost or confused, wondering what your life purpose is, that is a huge question to ask yourself. And notice that you might not always feel like you have that answer or it isn't being revealed yet. And so that might feel a little bit defeating because that instant gratification, you think that you need to have it right now and you need to know, but know that the universe works in baby steps. Mm -hmm. There are lots of baby steps that need to happen and it's stepping one foot in front of the other and keeping that movement and that momentum going in order to stay fluid and release the stagnancy and the frustration that comes along 
with the energy signatures of this type. Mm. And your sign that basically when you're following your strategy and authority and you're living in alignment, basically your sign is satisfaction. A deep contentment and excitement about life. It's funny because I used to think satisfaction sounded like it was just mediocre, but I had a client who is a generator and I worked with him for several months. I helped him return to his sport. I remember the first day that we got him back to running, he had been asking me for weeks if he was gonna run again. And it was the day that we got him back to running and after he did a little bit of jogging, like I could tell that he was really excited and really lit up and I asked him if he was happy and he just looked at me with a little smirk on his face and said, yep, I'm satisfied. And it was in that moment that I really felt that satisfaction is like this really deep peace and acknowledgement of the perfection of the moment when you're really living in alignment. Mm, yeah, it's living moment to moment. So it's the point to point and then it moves to the point and then it moves to the next point and then to the next point. So there's this movement that connects the energy, but it's always the next now moment. Mm. One of the things that makes you unique is that you really are focused on yourself and your self-expression and what your contribution as your own individual being and yourself provides for the world. You get to reach enlightenment and mm. utilize your design by focusing on what brings you pleasure this is a huge element for the second chakra sacral center as well because there is this element called pleasure principle. So when you experience pain and survival, there's this anxiety, there's this like anxiousness, but the pleasure principle creates a safe environment for greater expansion, for higher consciousness, for turning the body into a temple. If you experience pain, you might find yourself wanting to delude your body like with drugs or alcohol and that actually might numb out uh, to deal with the whatever trauma that you might have experienced in in your life by chance and so if you find yourself wanting to seek out how to live in a higher expression of yourself becoming aware of your addictions because that brings pleasure you know mm -hmm. but um you might not be able to raise your vibration. It's like, oh, it's instant gratification. It's, yeah. It might be giving you pleasure in the moment, but in the long term, you might be finding yourself being degraded in your energy or numbing out or not really fulfilling in your potential because you're using this as a crutch. Yeah, I find this to be a huge theme among generators and manifesting generators because they get in a they get in a rut so to speak and we all have addictions we all have addictions to things whether it's drugs alcohol or it's just you know using netflix as a way to numb out for example or i'm not gonna lie sure. i i wake up in the morning and i am not maybe the full expression of myself if i haven't had my cup of coffee but it's those little things that they may not necessarily actually be lighting us up so much as they're distracting us from the things that don't light us up and so it's really important for us to acknowledge when can we maybe shed those little distractions away to get in tune with and confront the things that we need to clear out in our lives so that we then create space within us to allow the universe to bring us those things that we actually do want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so much about the movement is clearing, keeping things flowing, fluid, the fluidity of this center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Clearing out and paving way for new things yeah. to take residency within within yourself. Letting go and going with the flow. Yeah, and it's not to say that having like one drink here and there with friends and stuff like is a bad thing. It's just like something to bring to your awareness because it's a common theme and it's something that can, when used in excess, it can dole your power. Yeah, just open invitations for you to see where that information lies within your experiment. Your whole life purpose is to discover who you are and live that expression of yourself. Other types have different purposes. You in particular are designed to really explore what it means to be you. 
the one thing to remember is that we've mostly been conditioned as manifestors to go out and go out and make it happen and go get it. And sure. Yeah, we've been conditioned to be like manifestors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And well, manifestors are only 9% of the population. Go drive, go do, get it, go get it. And sure. Just do it. Make your dreams come true. Mm -hmm. You got to, you know, you got to go out and get it if you want it kind of a mentality. Right. And sure, that can work, but it's a lot more effective and efficient if you wait for knowing what to respond to. Because otherwise, if you get into a commitment, contracty kind of situation, whether it's like marriage, jobs, house mortgages or long-term things and you're going with it because like, oh, I feel like I got to make it happen. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, I'm, oh, it's, uh, it's time for me to do this now at this point in my life. If you make those decisions with your mind, instead of waiting for you to feel good and being in touch with your body, you might enter into a contract that ends up not being a good fit for you later on in life. And then you have to rewrite that whole contract or you have to reevaluate everything and then you have to make a huge life choice and decision and unravel this contract as it gets much more difficult for you once this commitment comes into play. Yeah, and sometimes responding is, is kind of subtle and it doesn't mean that you can't go out and start your own business or that you can't initiate somebody into a relationship or anything. It doesn't mean anything like that. Yeah.